Thank you for investing your time with me today to learn more about our Bite Size Azure series. My name is Jason Lambert, Cloud Technical Consultant for Microsoft Azure at Ingram Micro. And today I'm going to talk about Azure Storage. Azure Storage, highly scalable cloud storage with built in security, durability, and reliability. There's few different flavors from blobs to tables and queues to disk and files. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about each one. So blobs, Azure blob storage consists of objects that are anywhere from one gig to 4.75 terabytes in size. And it's a repository that will hold up to 500 terabytes of data. So basically anything from media files, video files, VHDs, um, if you did uh, high graphics, GPU type product or projects, uh, you could put that in Azure blob storage. It's very much the way I kind of think about it from an on-prem perspective. It's not SAN, you can't boot your virtual machines from it. It's more like a NAS, large NAS that you can just, you, you basically have data that you can put into it and then you can um, deploy servers, download and deploy servers out of it. Tables are massive auto scaling, no SQL stores. Uh, very robust, available to, to manage um, the data that you require. Queues, reliable messaging uh, for people that understand tables and queues. I'm not going to get into much detail uh, there. Typically in the SMB environment for infrastructure, we don't really uh, work in tables and queues. Disks, so that would be page, blob, and disk. Think of page blob and disk like RAID. So if you purchase a physical machine from Ingram Micro from your favorite vendor, typically you'll get one drive in it for your operating system and application. And then you would consider a RAID array for your data. Same rings true in Azure. You get um, in any instance that you deploy on Azure, the, uh, Microsoft to carve out 127 gigs of storage for your operating system and application. And then I would highly, we would highly encourage you to look at page blob and disk for production storage. That's attached storage uh, for Azure. Azure also calls out, so if you look at the templates online uh, under virtual machines, you will see storage that's allocated with the machines. It's not storage that you should trust your data to. In a nutshell, what I understand is Microsoft provisions virtual machines on physical machines. And so they also have the ability to manage their infrastructure and move those workloads around or the virtual machines around. They can't necessarily move the physical uh, data that's on the physical hard drives. So that when they move it, you'd lose that data. So Microsoft uses page blob and disk for your production storage. It's replicated a minimum three times on different storage arrays within the data center. So you're protected from Microsoft having to do maintenance on any one of their storage arrays. Uh, if they take one offline, your data would be replicated to a third array. Uh, so it's very safe. But again, it's not backup either. So um, make sure you deploy a backup solution as well as uh, have your data replicated. And then files. Files are a network share that you would have on Azure. So it's, a bit, it's not part of um, Active Directory. There's no read write command available on uh, Azure files, but basically it creates data available. You can load data in it. It's available for your servers to get access to. So if you have applications that require a network share uh, to access or multiple machines to access a network share, that's what Azure files are for. If you want it for, you know, you think I might use that instead of a file server, it won't work if you're looking for uh, rights management and the uh, ability of being able to decide who gets access to what files and folders like you would in Active Directory uh, on a domain. So I wouldn't use it there. Azure Import Export, the ability for you to ship large amounts of data into Microsoft. For example, you might have four or five terabytes of data from a customer. Instead of uploading it, maybe on a T1 line to take you four or five months to get it up there, you could put it on a SATA drive and then ship that SATA drive into Microsoft, and then they would upload it into the storage vault that you created in your blob storage. Again, I spoke about that earlier as being a repository for data. And then if you add, if you attach a return label number to that, that would also be shipped back to you. Uh, you own that drive. So Microsoft won't sh ship you a drive 
for your data to be put on it, you'd have to buy the drive and then ship it back. And an AZ copy, so through PowerShell, it's the ability for you to move large amounts of data up into Microsoft Azure. Just want to call out here that Microsoft is recognized as a market leader, as you can see, for uh, ability to execute and completeness of vision. Microsoft's number two against uh, AWS, the number one market leader. And, and there's a couple of nice messages uh, from industry leaders in regards to <clears throat> Azure's performance is uh, best in an independent study uh, and market survey. Now, when you put your data up in Azure, it's well taken care of. And just a little bit of an assessment between, you know, if you had to analyze costs with uh, traditional data center versus Azure storage, this give you an idea of your CopEx and, uh, sorry, your CapEx and OpEx models uh, in regards to, you know, scalability, agility, and innovation, and how to manage the infrastructure in a traditional data center versus, versus Azure. Thanks so much for your time. I very much appreciate you investing the time here to learn a little bit more, a bite size of Azure storage. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please reach out to our sales team at Ingram Micro and we'd be happy to help.